Hi, welcome to one of Bereson's Leadership Chats. Leadership is about creating positive work environments for people to thrive in. Today we're discussing uh, the menopause and how a business can assist in this phase uh, of a woman's life so that they can continue to, to work and to thrive within their role. Today we have Zoe Mander and we have uh, Dr. Alison Johnson. They're going to be sharing and discussing their personal and professional experience of menopause in the workplace. So um, to both of you really to kind of share some ideas, in the approach to um, this time of life that people talk about, this menopause time of life, which is fast becoming a not a taboo as, as it was, what was your thinking before you um, arrived at that point about what it was going to be like um, and what was the reality? So for me personally it was um like you say, such a non-topic and it happened behind closed doors for the women who was going through that. Only personal experience was mum and some relatives that um, because you're being uh, in an environment where <laughs> your mum's suddenly becoming a hot mess and a bit more screechy. Um, I don't know if <laughs> you've found that the same, that you know, as a teenager you just don't want to be near it and it doesn't really impact you as such and it's only in later life now going through it that the reality of what she must have been doing and trying to cope with running the household and us and uh, having teenagers in the house and all their friends and managing stuff, um, you know, obviously was an extreme challenge and it's only now in hindsight that we can appre I can appreciate and think about mm. what she was going through and what I'm putting my own family through when the hubby and sending him off to work and so on. What mm. about you? So obviously I've been a GP for over 20 years so I've got like professional experience of patients going through the menopause so I've, you know I have got some expectations of what it would be like and what women have been experiencing through. Um, yeah. and how they've been affected by it often they say they don't realize how bad it was until <laughs> they came out the other end of it yeah. really so um so from my point of view yeah it's, it's the unknown but you sort of do realize you know how bad it can be for some women yeah i think do you think there's been um more changes um you know, from the amount of people coming to the GPs who are happy mm. to talk about it and wanting support rather than it being that taboo and it's just got to be done behind yeah. closed doors. It sort of comes and goes in phases really. So like if about 10 years ago, then nobody wanted to be on the HRT and then it, it depends on sort of different evidence in, in the press at the time, but obviously Davina McCall's been doing quite a lot of work around menopause, yeah. which is great, and you know, women are now more aware of it and wanting to come and yeah. seek help and knowing the help's there as well for them. I think that certainly from my point of view, the um, I was initially told many years ago with other medical stuff going on that I could never have that, but 20 mm. years from that initial, you can't have it, there's been yeah. a lot of uh, changes you know with the pharmacy and what have you and obviously the statistics I know there was the scare tactics for mm. breast cancer and mm. you know oh, it's to be avoided so people didn't want to touch on the subject and certainly in retail for working in a lingerie shop obviously we see it from that mm. side of you know yeah. ladies with um, suffering from pain ill-fitting bras I think one of the unknown symptoms that has really been highlighting is that it um, the breast area and the fitting of bras doesn't work as well and you develop symptoms there which mm. impacts you, your day to day. So from personal experience and seeing it in the retail setting and you know um, having them discussions is really really useful because you can send people out a bit more informed and mm. what options are there and finding them the right bra in the first place for example. But to have them um, unofficial conversations and counselling mm. suite whilst you're doing a fitting um, promotes that discussion and gives ladies the opportunity to say hey, this is happening to me mm. or oh, same here yeah. what about this what about that which empowers them to you know to go out and seek help and you know mm. I, I know I've sent uh, people in your direction um, mm. because I know you've been doing more stuff and you've attended other conferences or training 
Yeah. And I think, like you said, that Davina stuff and having these conversations and getting support mm. and making it less of, oh, it's just women's issues yeah, that we can't exactly. talk about because that's just infuriating. So that, yeah. that sounds like, um, in one way, um, it, it's giving you an extra set of skills or knowledge to, to, to help people who come into your mm. arena in, in retail. Yeah, for sure. I think the, you know, wherever you can promote positive discussion and acknowledgement of symptom signs and even if you can't do anything about it you know I'm thinking from an employment perspective you know you can't suddenly change um, what you you know what can happen for a lady because they do have to go through it physically yeah. but mm -hmm. from a workplace perspective yeah. um, what can you do um, you know so shared workspaces where you know half the population need all the windows open while the rest are freezing um, <laughs> you know, allowing, um, having, you know, access for time out for appointments when it's at its worst, mm. um, being like, time sensitive. Well, things like, you know, sanitary towels in the toilets and women like might have really heavy periods flooding through the clothes and employers need to understand that really and yeah. give, maybe they need flexible working if they're, they're struggling with their memory and various other things as well. And how did it affect, so that's how you can see it having an impact on other people and some of the yeah. ideas that we might put into the workplace. How did it affect your um, ability to, to work? What was your experiences of how it affected you? I think for me, the hot flushes is one thing um, and feeling overheated and you know, you just, it's, you don't know when it's coming, it's just a massive hit and it's overwhelming. Um, but the, the worst symptom, I think, is actually the, the menor fog and the forgetfulness. You can, we can be in part conversation just like we're doing now and you suddenly can't remember the words or you can't mm. find it. And I try and describe it a bit similar to um, having a daughter with autism that it's like you have a record room or a file room and you go into it and you've, you've got a visual representation of filing cabinets and all the information's there but you just can't find the right drawer okay. and the right hanging file to pull that information out. So thinking for business particu particularly, you know, if you're managing projects and things are time sensitive and you're managing people and staff and budgets and then you, your mind goes and it's not in your control and you, you know, that is a, creates a level of frustration because mm. you, you've always been able to do this stuff and multitask and talk on the phone whilst writing notes and doing this and thinking there and keeping an eye on stuff over there and suddenly that multitasking ability goes as well as being able to just function as a cognitive speech process it's <laughs> yeah. it's just like and you can you know that's humiliating it's embarrassing it's hard work mm -hmm. to then put yourself in that place and you don't you may stop volunteering for projects that would interest you you might not uh, make yourself available. Um, you feel your work suffering, yeah. that you're not doing as good a job, and then you know that can tie into uh, ladies feeling worthless um, mm -hmm. and not capable. And I think because there's such a hidden um, part of it of not actually knowing, and for some it's not um, like running into a wall and the symptoms suddenly start, bam, there it mm. is. It's insidious gradual, mm. yeah. and it's very gradual. Do you mm. find that from... I mean, from my point of view, it's not really, so far not affecting my work, um, but because we, like the way we work has changed and we're on the computer a lot of the time, and then when you get home from work, then that's when it, it, you just, like I haven't been able to read a book for two years, except on holiday, just the concentration is just you've got to spend all your time at work concentrating and then you get home it's like no I can't pick up a book I can't do that anymore <laughs> my brain's fried yeah um, too tired isn't it because yeah. and then if you don't sleep at night then obviously that has a pa impact at work the next day you've got to right. concentrate on things yeah I mean you mentioned like word finding difficulty as well which can sometimes that for me is like people's names like, like struggle to remember them in meetings and things like that which can be embarrassing yeah. as well so what, what do you need then if, if um, uh, you know, a woman going through menopause and experiencing some of these things um, which have a potential to um, really affect your confidence to, to carry on doing your job and you described mm -hmm. having a strategy of 
all the focused energy you had was about the, the, the mm. day doing the job and then the, the exhausted artists. So what, yeah. what, what would you need from uh, a workplace? I won't just say um, mm. men leaders, I'll, just, I'll talk from, from the workplace as a whole. What do, you, what, what do people need to allow them to carry on doing the job? I think that, you know, a lot of women do give up work around the menopause. I think the figure I was reading earlier was 370,000 women in 2019 had to give up work because they couldn't cope and you mentioned that you know they're just not able to concentrate and do this so it's understanding from the employers maybe flexible working so they, you know they could leave early or they could have like an hour in the middle of the day to do something different yeah um, they might need to go to the doctors for different appointments and things so it's having that flexibility also Speaking, being able to speak about it openly in the office because there has been a big taboo. So, you know, the fact that you're doing this video is, is brilliant because actually getting people talking about it really. So, I think it's creating space and, you know, a level of support and acknowledgement, not just, um, you know, on an individual level when you're managing someone, um, but, you know, so that there's company wide policies and recognitions that this is an mm. actual thing and looking at just because you may be a heavily male dominated workforce mm. um, there's still going to be female visitors you're still going to have to engage so even if you had 100% all male you know some of the business partners that you might be in touch with that you're working with that you're providing contracts or supply or service for um, you are going to be coming into contact with ladies and it's that unknown it's the same way that you know as a society we've got to be conscious of uh, pronouns mm, yeah. and how we operate you know and function around people that you've also got this um, you know it's a, a recognized medical condition mm. that is going to impact a big chunk of the population at some point and for an unknown amount of time some ladies get off lightly with no real symptoms and it can be over in, I don't know, two, three, five years, others, it's 20 years later, yeah, yeah. which is, you know, a massive section when somebody's built up work experience, invested in a company mm. and time and, you know, skills and a pride in the work yeah. to suddenly reach a point where, you know, some people are talking about retirement, but others are not mm. to then think, oh, I'm, I'm feeling that I need to leave. Mm. because I can't cope because this is missing okay. so maybe having like say right okay you, you're not you're struggling so you could have like some unpaid leave or you know just having that bit of understanding that maybe they're not doing as well as they normally would so they go away and get treatment and whatever and then they can come back and take up the job again and so is it flexible working within you know that you're creating um, a team so that you're not further adding humiliation or embarrassment by saying well we're, we're not having you manage anything ever again and yeah. taking it away but just sensitively managing um, and going oh well um, team working a bit more you know shared responsibility and mm. actually asking them you know putting the question what do you need because it is such an individual process mm. of randomness going on that yeah, some people different. it's not going to touch so you don't want a blanket or oh, this stage in life, if as soon as you mention the M word, yeah. that oh well everything all stops and we change because that it's not necessary. So it's going with what, what the woman's actually needed. So yeah. it's individualised. Yeah, yeah, totally. Definitely. But also don't just have like oh you menopause policy tick done that covered it actually mean it and it's not just lip actually, service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because there's nothing worse than. Um, you know, a policy being created, a booklet, and that yeah, tick sheet. Yeah, done now, it's menopause. It's but in reality, you, yeah. you're not actually providing anything. Yeah, and they, you know, make them feel like, don't just say, oh, you can talk about menopause, actually yeah. mean it. And, yeah. it. It is an interesting thing about creating uh, policies or initiatives within large communities, which, are, which is what organisations are, mm. um, and thinking, about because we put it on a poster on the wall, that's it done therefore now. It's, yeah. it's fulfilled yeah yeah um so what's um uh, i mean was your experience um, similar i mean in a professional environment with lots of other doctors did you get um understanding or do you get understanding what what's your experience of your workplace um 
It's difficult because I'm self-employed as well, so you can't really say, oh, your employer's okay. not <laughs> helping you because I am the employer. But uh, there's only, in my practice, there's only um, three doctors, so um, and you could say we don't talk about things like that, really. So, right. Um, but obviously we've got staff that I employ as well, so we've discussed having like a menopause cafe at work or, you know, yeah. doing a session with me leading on menopause and yeah. how we can support women in the workplace going through menopause. But they, from a, my male colleague's point of view, I mean, obviously they're seeing patients with menopause as well, so they're, they'll be aware of it, but I tend to keep my private life separately, yeah. to be honest, so I probably wouldn't necessarily discuss it at work. That and I think that's the difficulty, that isn't it, for, yeah. you know, a shared space with a, yeah. another GP practice, and like you said, there's um, yeah. a level of professionalism and privacy and, you know, personal yeah. choice that Yeah, but I also have to, because I share the same building where my own GP practice, where I'm registered, so that becomes then awkward as well, because you have to go and see someone, and then you have to work beside them. And yeah. 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 So I guess we're, that's saying we each probably cope with it differently. That's yeah, why exactly. the individual attention, like, what mm. do you need? Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, every woman's different. And, yeah. You know, some women might want to talk about it. Personally, for me, I don't. But, you know, I'm happy to talk about it with other women at work. And if yeah. they want support, I'm happy to give it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, doctors aren't meant to suffer from the things that the patients suffer from, are they? Really? No, exactly. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a different. You have to be a different species, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even that is an, a, you know, an acknowledgement of a way mm. of being, and you know that mm. professionalism that yeah. you, you feel you can't be seen as a person because. Mm. It, you know, there's a title that comes with doctor, yeah. and there's a, a an element of, um, I suppose, st- you know, standoffishness, isn't it? And keeping mm. all them roles separate. separate. Um, so there, there is like a big doctor's menopause cafe Facebook group, which for, for doctors to get support for patients, oh, but right. also for themselves as well. So I'm like part of that, and it's that's been like brilliant particularly not just for personally but professionally as well to just aware awareness on menopause if you have difficult cases you can discuss it on so are you comfortable with us advertising that at the end of the put, put it on the uh, um, on the screen at the end of this uh, video is that is that okay so it's uh, it's mainly like a closed facebook group so i'm not sure okay. whether you okay. can advertise right. it or not but. So it's a closed it's uh, locally. Doctors, yeah. yeah okay. But the Menopause Cafe is a national... So Menopause Cafe, ah, okay. that's different, which we are... Um, so I've done two Menopause Cafes so far, um, where women just come along and just chat. There's no agenda, they just chat about the menopause. Um, okay. It's like a national ch- charity um, that we are holding one in November. And is that online or, or in, no, in that's person? In person. In person. So we come along, just have a chat, and you know whatever yeah. you want to talk about. So that's all based at um, the the uh, church rooms within the, um, the is it Neville Street? Um, how, is it? How, uh, we'd have to <laughs> add that in. I think the um, mm. but to have again a bit like this, you just throw a few questions in. Mm. whilst you sat around at a table and just you know let the conversation yeah, flow okay. and if there's any specific requests for help you're there in yeah. GP capacity but otherwise it just ebbs and flows and gives but it's not, that space. It's not to promote anything specific so it's not to say right you must go on HRT it's just yeah. to have a chat and it's not just for women either men can come along as well and mm. anyone can come just to talk about them it's just getting people out there talking about the menopause and so making it less to do, I guess. Yeah. I think it's that acknowledgement, isn't it, that it's, yes, it's physically happening to females, mm. but husbands, partners, boyfriends, colleagues, peers, yeah. it's happening, Children, you know, yeah. with <laughs> and everybody's feeling the effects and the forces of it, mm. and by communicating openly, yeah. um, hopefully creates a bit more of a supportive environment, because... Yeah. If you haven't got the support and you do feel that you've got to close down and not talk about stuff and you can't mm. say what's going on for you, 
in a time when you're in flux and frustrated or embarrassed or humiliated and physically dealing with stuff mm. um it just adds into that spiral and you, you can't step out whereas having menopause cafes having mm. discussions like this um you know promoting um open dialogue and then hopefully putting stuff into place within workspaces yeah it can only help and improve the situation for everyone yeah definitely yeah. and women can get that support because maybe they they can't speak to people at work or at home and it's just knowing that they're not on their own and that other women are going through it and there's so many symptoms of menopause that often you don't even realize that that is menopause like right loads of things just um that's a huge checklist of things but yeah. and a lot of women have ended up going for different investigations for like the palpitations or they've been diagnosed with depression or and actually it's all Menopause. Menopause related. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And they've been told, oh no, you've got depression, or, but actually, you know, the hormonal imbalance making them have like, low mood and crying, and so they could start crying in the middle of work. And, yeah. You know, it's yeah. Hard. So have you seen an increase then over, over say, the last two, three years or so of people being prepared to come to you and ask sort of the questions and what's going on? Yeah, a massive increase. So. Like our practice, we only have 4,500 patients, but I'm still seeing like three or four patients a day with menopause symptoms. And um, there's a massive national shortage on HRT because of the Davina program, and it's really frustrating. So, you want to help women, and then you can't actually get hold of what you want to prescribe for them. And, um, and also, women are having to pay as well. So it's costing the fortune. So you, you try one HRT, that doesn't work, try not, and then you can't get hold of it. Or right. So it's gonna, it's costing a lot of money in prescription charges for women. So, okay. you know, like there's an MP called Caroline Harris, I think, who's campaigning to get free HRT in, for women. Yeah, okay. And I think ultimately that can only be a good thing. I mean, obviously Scotland mm -hmm. introduced free sanitary products. Mm. Um, which yeah. you know it still gets paid where you know you you try and link that in this ongoing cost of living crisis oh, yeah, and if people you know are struggling to pay bills keep a roof over their head and provide mm. food then that's the sort of stuff yeah. that won't get purchased when actually yeah. it's such a it can make a massive difference once you've found yeah. the right combo or what works but also like there's two prescription charges so if, so if i prescribe like a combination hrt it's got two different hormones in it but the dose is not throughout the month then they have to pay twice mm -hmm. it's just you know well, it's really not fair on women and as you say there's a cost of living crisis yeah. so and it's probably like looking at health inequalities a lot of women that would benefit from hrt are not coming forward to so we need to try and tackle that as well. What, um, so just to, to, to bring this to a, to a conclusion, I'm a middle-aged manager uh, and I've, you're in my office, you're in my space. What are you, what are you saying to people like me what, that you need that, that would allow you to, to carry on doing the, the, the job that you want to do, that you're in, and what, what's, what, what is it you need for uh, somebody in a leadership role? even something simple like oh do you want a fan on your desk or you know something like that is an easy fix so it's just like talking to women you know what do you need okay. it's different for everyone so i think the there is that simple physical physical environment yeah. physical environment easy fixes mm. um space you know provision of um sanitary stuff the the fans um an acknowledgement of um, working spaces particularly when they're shared mm. um, you know so if you you know you've got that mix of male and female young and old because younger people feel colder <laughs> where at a time when ladies are feeling hotter um, mm. and that can possibly cause friction and hostile environments because obviously you know the, the talking would occur oh, it's a I'm mm. freezing why does she have to come in blah 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 so you've got actual practical stuff that could be done and easy discussions <clears throat> The more complex stuff is actually having the opportunity to talk to that individual. What do you need from us? Right. Because that is so different for every female going through it. But having an open door, having an ability to be able to communicate to your staff 
um, and say, you know, I might not be able to fix it immediately. I'm aware of it. You're acknowledging that they're going through this process. And even if I can't help you right now, but it changes in a week, in a month, six months, you know, to have that um, environment where they feel safe and comfortable right. enough to come mm. and talk okay. to their bosses is yeah. probably one of the big key things yeah, because having yeah actually talking about it and acknowledging it yes is a massive thing yeah and it may take some of the pressure off them so if they know they've got these deadlines and they're struggling with brain fog then you know just so actually we can be a bit more flexible you can um, right you can leave early today and come in like later tomorrow or whatever it depends you know if you're having a bad day just to acknowledge that with them and I think that, you know, females generally for have a skill at multitasking and knowing yeah. where the deadlines are and flexi working themselves. Yeah. So, you know, if there's, something's not finished in the day and then the, they, they can't sleep at night, mm. you know, whilst not being able to tackle the insomnia or what have you, that is an opportunity yeah. that they would finish work. And as long as the deadlines are being met, yeah. to have that flexibility to how they get met, Right. can yeah. work in the you know the employer's favor ultimately yeah. and or maybe let them work from home so if they're like having horrendous periods and they're like flooding through the clothes up and go to the toilet every half an hour then you know it's in a massive office it's going to be humiliating so yeah. let them work from home for those three days of the month or whatever yeah. But the main thing is dialogue, it seems. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's the open dialogue that people Just need. talking about it, get, you know, the fact that you're acknowledging it is a massive right. step. Really. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because I guess it, um, is the fear of uh, being judged, uh, is that a thing we think that closes down that mm. uh, or stops that um, communication opening up in the first place? I mean. Yeah, totally. Because they feel like, ashamed that they can't do the job anymore, that they're, you know, it's as I say that's why a lot of women leaving work because they just can't multitask anymore and they've got like probably teenagers at home as well that they've got to look after and right. like that's quite stressful or then leaving home and it's just everything comes at the same time doesn't it and some yeah. empathy and understanding and, uh, mm. and not, not judgment just dialogue yeah I do I think, think you know is it you know that term of the empty nesters that always comes at a time when <laughs> you know you sh- you, your kids are leaving, yeah. you know, you've spent um, a chunk of time together with your hubby and then all this stuff occurs and what mm. have you got in common, you know, breakdowns of marriage occur, that sort of stuff and mm. how much of that is underpinned. So, you know, having a stressful job situation mm. is another thing on it's top of another, that, yeah, um, coffin, isn't it? that you're trying to manage something that is so wildly to a degree out of your control as a, as a person. Right. Um, mm. Yes, some symptoms can be managed. Yes, you, you might be able and can have HRT or gels or patches and all of that sort of stuff. And because it's an unknown amount of time for it going on, mm. you know, there is no quick fix solution. And, you know, an employer can't be fully responsible no. for an entire workforce and all the symptoms. But there literally mm. is practical steps like fans on the desk, um, mm. flexi working. Time off for appointments. Time off for appointments, mm. should it need be. Um, but I think the biggest thing would be that the feeling of support, um, you know, humans, we are judgy. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> and that, the, the, you've got to have a certain amount of that because that's what keeps you safe. Yeah. You know, you've got feelings for circumstances, mm. but to remove some of the stigma attached to menopause and, um, you know, that long list. So even highlighting... I think if you know if I was to see as an employer, um, you know, a poster um, or a leaflet that's distributed with mm. the foot, you know, a whole list of symptoms, yeah. then you know it's managing um, that with not that patronising throwaway, men or yeah. uh, time of the month type yeah. stuff mm. because that is infuriating and right. you know it's like telling um, a human to calm down when they're in a rage it's not going to work <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know so I think to add yeah. in that type of stuff but you could also have it on your intranet like a link to like menopause matters website or whatever and to, yeah. like just giving that information to women they might not know actually or you can get this help from here or you know there's all these good resources that they can read which if you've got it on your business website then 
Mm. I think it's having that knowledge, isn't it? Because like we said earlier, the some some of us ladies don't necessarily know and mm. don't connect the dots. So it's not to immediately go in and be patronising and go, oh, is it menopause? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you know, be, but yeah. having that awareness of all having awareness within a business environment of, um, you know, in parts of appraisals or just mm. um, water cooler chat, um, you know, bringing stuff up or my wife or my partner's doing this and she's really struggling that even that sort of stuff can lead yeah. Yeah. to positive discussions and even if they don't pick up our you know that it's shut down there it's mm. food for thought for somebody on yeah. both sides to go away and go oh, well maybe so yeah having links yeah. or leaflets and stuff yeah. within the environment and having you know hr aware of it Mm. All that sort of stuff you that can, can like be positive. All of the menopause cafe at work. Or yeah. Yes. Like I guess if you're, if you're seen to be sponsoring or, or accepting or linking to those sorts mm. of things, that, and that's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 It makes it again it's another message of it. It's an okay subject to. Yeah. It's to okay bring, to, talk to talk about, about menopause and. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, that's uh, really useful. Thank you very much. I found it very informative. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. And uh, thanks for coming and, uh, and giving your time. Brilliant. Okay, thanks. Good to be here. Mm -hmm.